Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the AI for Good uh, webinar. My name is uh, Reinhard Scholl. I'm with the ITU, the International Telecommunication Union, the United Nations Specialized Agency for Information and Communication Technologies. And I'm going to be the facilitator of this uh, webinar. We hope that uh, all of you and your families and friends and colleagues are healthy and safe. Thank you very much for joining today. The uh, ITU does three things. Uh, we do firstly allocate uh, frequencies to the uh, services that make use of the radio communication spectrum, such as mobile telephony or GPS. Then we do standards. A lot of the bits and bytes that are running across optical networks right now are being standardized by ITU. And we also assist developing countries in setting up their information and communication infrastructure. Before we go into the matter, let's look at a couple of uh, housekeeping rules. So on the bottom panel, you'll find these two icons, uh, chat and Q&A. So if you have questions that you would like to ask our speakers, uh, please use the uh, Q&A icon. And for anything else, uh, please use the uh, chat window. We have the microphone for attendees disabled. We will also make the uh, presentations, uh, the PowerPoint presentations uh, available after the end of the uh, webinar. Okay, so the uh, topic of today is uh, COVID-19 case study using ICT and AI to flatten the curve in the Republic of Korea. Up until a few weeks ago, Unless you were an epidemiologist, uh, you probably haven't heard and didn't know what flattening the curve means. But now I think that everyone who is on this webinar today knows what it is or has at least heard this term. So the curve is a graph which is plotting the number of infected people versus time. And if no measures are taken, measures like social distancing, then this curve is going to be a steeply rising bell-shaped curve that's skyrocketing. And when the curve has reached its peaks, it's also exponentially faster decreasing. The problem with this scenario is that it is overloading the health system of countries. That's something which we're seeing more and more in all countries of the world today. So the idea is to flatten the curve. You would like to spread the number of infections over a long period of time. But even flattening the curve is not enough. You might actually want to push down the curve. You would like to decrease the number of infections. There is one country that's standing out and that's the Republic of Korea. It's the only large country which has been able to so far successfully combat uh, COVID-19 without locking down its entire economy. So we are very grateful that we have uh, colleagues from Korea on the line today. And uh, we are grateful for three reasons. One is the battle against COVID-19 has not been won yet, uh, not in Korea as well. So all the experts keep working around the clock in making sure that uh, COVID-19 doesn't cause additional anxiety. The second reason is a lot of countries and companies from all around the world are contacting you because they would like to know what's the secret of Korea? How did uh, Korea manage to do so? And the third reason why we are really grateful that you're uh, joining tonight is it's nine o'clock in the evening, Friday. So we're really, really, very happy to have you on board. So let me introduce uh, our uh, speakers. So we have uh, Dr. Sang Kyu Lee. Dr. Lee is the director of the Division of Risk Assessment and International Cooperation of the KCDC, which is the Korean Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And then we have uh, Dr. Tae Myung Jong. 
He is professor, he is dean of the College of Software, and he is also the director of Information Management Technology Laboratory of Song Kyung Kwang University. So let's see that we have everyone uh, connected. So Dr. Lee, are you there? Yes. Okay, great. How are you doing tonight? Um, I'm fine, thank you. Good. Are you getting the day off tomorrow? Uh, no, unfortunately. No? <laughs> I have to work every day. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, we have the uh, presentation up and we are very excited to listen to your presentation, Dr. Lee. So the floor is yours, uh, please go ahead. Thank you very much for giving me, giving me the floor. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. It's my great honor to share our knowledge and experience on responding to COVID-19 in Korea with all the, the countries around the world. Let me begin the presentation. Next. Next slide, please. Yes. Uh, this slide shows the timeline, how the situation has gone and how our government responded to COVID-19. As you can see in the timeline here, we issued alert level one blue after the cluster of cases of pneumonia of unknown origin in Wuhan was uh, first reported in China so that we could be prepared for possible importation of COVID-19. We gradually raised our national alert level as the outbreak pro progresses. The alert level increased, increased to level two when the first case was confirmed and then to level three after more imported cases were confirmed. The secondary and tertiary infections were import, uh, reported after them. Finally, we raised the level to the uh, level four, which is the highest level in response uh, to the big clusters, Shincheonji and Denam Hospital occurred. Next slide, please. Let's move on to the next slide. This uh, graph shows the total number of confirmed cases and the confirmed cases in each day since the first case was confirmed on January 20th um, in uh, early this year. As of uh, March 25th, there have been 9137 uh, 9, cases in total. The peak of the transmission so far was on February 29th, 9th, with a record of 909 confirmed cases in a single day. After then, though, uh, the newly added cases have been slowly decreased. Since March 12th, the number of newly confirmed cases have been around 100 until today. We are trying our best to maintain the number of new confirmed cases, not exceeding 100, 100 uh, right now, and hoping that it can decrease as many and as fast as possible. Um, next slide, yes. Next, next couple of slides are the basic epidemiological information of the confirmed cases in Korea. The one on the left is in this slide uh, is uh, the age distribution of confirmed cases. The distinctive feature is that we have the largest number of confirmed cases in females in their 20s. The reason we have more patients in age group 20 to 29 is because the big cluster Shincheonji religious group is mainly targeting women in 20s for their missionary works. So there are many, many members, uh, 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 the female members in 20s. On the right hand side, you can see the number of fetal cases and the fatality rate on each age group. The highest fatality rate is 13.5% in age group 80 and above. And the over, overall case fatality rate is 1.38% as of March 27th. Therefore, as a mitigation strategy, uh, 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 we established a new system to put uh, more resources on severe cases. 
Uh, first, we categorize the confirmed cases into two, into four categories: mild, moderate, severe, and very severe. Each category receives the different treatment and get admitted to different facilities accordingly, um, because we actually experienced experienced the um, the uh, the um, much more cases occurred uh, than the capacity that we have already prepared. So we had to expand uh, the, our, uh, the treatment facilities and then the hospitals to accommodate all uh, kinds of needs of uh, these cases. So uh, we've uh, actually uh, prioritized our resources and also uh, by the, uh, the, the cases of severity. Next slide. Uh, this slide indicated um, the distribution of uh, the confirmed cases by regions and clusters. The graph on the left shows that Daegu and Gyeongbuk provinces, where the Shincheonji cluster was mainly found, and, and um, uh, these, these uh, areas have the highest number of cases. Other regions, such as uh, Seoul, Gyeonggi, and Chungnam, are also experiencing relatively small sporadic clusters bringing the current total number of the cases to around 300 more in the regions. Furthermore, the number of cases found in airport screening is 101 right now. It's very, very recent data. It's, I think, uh, just uh, within a week, we had this uh, uh, large number of uh, cases at the airport screening, uh, which means that uh, um, there are uh, 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 the increase of the uh, imported cases from the foreign countries. And then it's really, um, we see that it's relatively very fast. Taking into account the outbreak situation all over the world, it is sort of expected. Therefore, we are more keen to strengthen our screening system at the point of entry and actively monitor and test all the incoming travelers. Uh, the pie chart on the right portion of the clusters in Korea uh, uh, are, you know, is the, about the, uh, uh, the, the clusters in Korea. Uh, as you may already know, Shincheonji is the biggest cluster as indicated in blue. Orange represents other clusters, other clusters. So uh, you can see the majority of the clusters. Uh, next slide, please. This slide actually summarizes the response, response measures taken along with the progress of outbreaks, especially after we found out local transmission, including Shincheonji cluster uh, during, uh, 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 in the middle of February. Right after we recognized the case number 31, which was confirmed on February 18th, was related to Shincheonji religious group, we started to identify and test for all the members of Shincheonji Daegu group. As the cases increase and evolve to the big cluster, our government escalated, escalated the national alert level to level four and designated Daegu and Chengdu as a, a special management region on February 9th. When we had a peak on our epic curve, we started a social distancing campaign as well. Um, this was at this time, it was just a, a national campaign um, that uh, we just uh, uh, boomed up. And the school opening has uh, postponed on March, 20, tw uh, March 2nd until uh, March uh, 23rd, and then further postponed till April 6th currently. While responding this big cluster, we have taken various measures, including the update of case definition uh, and the vision of our um, the, 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 the response guidelines. And this designation of national safe hospitals and establishment of living treatment supporting centers for accommodating all these uh, the big numbers of cases and the deployment of public doctors and so on. As the number of imported cases increase again, we expanded special entry um, procedure, including testing and screening for travelers now. Next slide, please. 
This slide is about our testing capacity. It is well known that Korea has conducted extensive lab testing and found cases at the very early stage. We have extended the testing capacity step by step. Uh, in the beginning of the outbreak, only KCCC was available for lab testing because we established this pan corona testing methodology uh, from the beginning of this COVID outbreak. But later on, it was expanded to the research institutes of a public health environment uh, in, the local, uh, uh, in the local governments. And uh, also we expanded it to further to the private medical laboratories, laboratories and hospitals. Therefore, currently we have a total of 118 testing institutions available nationwide and the capacity is uh, 15,000 testing per day on average and uh, maximum 20,000 per day. Next slide, please. Okay, this slide uh, uh, is about uh, uh, the, the, the pictures of the uh, drive through sample collection and screening clinic, clinics. Um, at, uh, as you might already know, these drive-through clinics have contributed as well to our testing capacity because we could collect and screen uh, the collected uh, samples and screen the people uh, for testing. So it, it was really uh, uh, the best way to uh, screen uh, all the uh, people suspect uh, subjects for testing. We have received many inquiries about how to operate them and shared the SOP um, uh, about this. Next slide, please. Uh, another aspect I would like to touch is our contact tracing strategy. Before the MERS outbreak in 2015, we learned that traditional investigative methods, depending on the patient or proxy interview, has the limitation of omissions and errors of previous activities of these cases. Uh, actually, based on the experience of the MERS outbreak in 2015, rules were revised to supplement the areas that were lacking at that time. In the current epidemiological investigation, contact investigation techniques that were used on a limited basis for the MERS outbreak in 2000 are being used in all confirmed cases of COVID-19. Uh, so there are mainly four steps, uh, which are investigation, risk assessment, contact classification, and contact management. At the investigation step, we obtain the preliminary information through interviewing the patient, um, uh, pri primary physicians and family. And then to compensate the missing information or confirm the interview outcomes, uh, we collect additional information at the stage of this assessment. The information such as medical records, mobile phone location using GPS, card transaction log, and video footage are collected and investigated in this stage. Based on this information, we classify the close and casual contacts and provide guidelines accordingly from the from uh, move uh, restriction to symptom monitoring. Movement restriction refers to a legal public health order for quarantine and controlled travel. Symptom monitoring can be either active or passive depending on the uh, uh, exposure risk. Next slide, please. Um, this slide is about the smart quarantine information system after MERS outbreak in 2015. Uh, actually, even before this COVID-19 outbreak, uh, every inbound traveler uh, entering Korea is required to be checked for fever and also to fill out a questionnaire about their health condition when they visited in risk areas in general. In particular, people who have traveled or lived in the areas with outbreaks of certain categories of infectious diseases, uh, such as MERS or Ebola, 
are subject to quantum investigations, including individual temperature checks and health condition questionnaire, as I mentioned before. In order to um, uh, enhance our quarantine system after the MERS outbreak in 2015, we introduced the smart quarantine information system. This flow, sh flow chart shows the overall workings of the smart quarantine information system. The information about the inbound traveler from the Ministry of Justice, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, airline companies, and major telephone telecommunication companies are collected by KCDC's quarantine information system. Actually, if some uh, people who come from the, uh, who takes the direct flight from the discrete, discrete areas, we can easily uh, recognize uh, these people have the, uh, some of the uh, risks of uh, 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 the importation of uh, certain uh, infectious or communicable diseases. Uh, but if somebody takes the like indir indirect flights uh, with uh, some connecting flights, then uh, we cannot sometimes trace um, their uh, travel history. So for the Korean citizens, they usually use this roaming service from the Korean telephone companies. So um, this, uh, 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 this, uh, we just uh, collected this roaming data from the major telephone companies so that we can uh, actually see uh, the more detailed travel history of our Korean citizens so that we can just uh, 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 ask them uh, more. Uh, we can have some more close interview with them about their uh, health condition and uh, we can also check about uh, their uh, the health status and then uh, and so on. Um, so these kinds of information about travelers from a country or a region with uh, an infectious disease outbreak is accessible by in, in, uh, frontline healthcare providers during the incubation period. Since the frontline healthcare providers can check the international travel history of a suspected case at, uh, at the registration, treatment, or prescription stage at the clinics, they are able to quickly identify and isolate or treat the suspected case in a timely manner. Based on the information collected from the inbound travelers at entry, if a person returns to Korea after traveling to a region affected by on infectious diseases, um, we send text messages to that person during the incubation period of the disease about how to report if they develop symptoms of, of an infectious disease. Since we send text messages through local communications company, they need to have a domestic cell phone number to receive these text messages, which covers most Koreans as well as most foreigners who are living, living in Korea. Actually, this system plays a very important role in responding to COVID-19 for early detection of imported cases, uh, either at the uh, uh, um, either at the, um, the um, entry uh, 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 screening uh, the, uh, uh, major, uh, at, at the point of entry and also at the, uh, the front line, uh, the healthcare uh, providers at the clinics. Um, actually, we use this uh, system uh, actively now as well. Uh, currently, I checked with my um, the, the, the relevant team and then they are currently uh, uh, unloading the, all the, uh, the, the, the income, inbound travelers information into this, uh, uh, this system currently. So uh, the, uh, the, uh, the doctors uh, at the clinic can uh, just uh, uh, find out whether this person has the some recent uh, the travel history to the to the any uh, countries uh, around the world. Uh, next slide, please. Then we further adopted uh, IT technology for efficient and cre uh, creative measures such as the self health check mobile app as well as the self quarantine safety and protection app. This slide shows how the self health uh, check mobile app works. 
all inbound travelers are required to install this app on their smartphones and submit their health condition every day on the app for 14 days. Um, you can see these uh, the 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 these uh, the uh, uh, the views of uh, the the first uh, page of the this app. Uh, you can start the mobile app from the front page, and then you can also proceed with a, a special quarantine form, and then you can also proceed to with uh, with the daily self health check. You can put all your health status on the app. Uh, and also you can check uh, the uh, location of screening clinics uh, uh, when, uh, so that we can just uh, contact them if you have any symptoms or so. Um, next slide, please. Last strategy we emphasize is a social distancing campaign. After the peak of the transmission on February 29th, we have uh, recommended the public to practice social distancing. Although it, it was a recommendation back then, now we practice enhanced social distancing from this week. We advise the public to cancel non-essential travel, event, and social gatherings, and so stay home as much as possible. High-risk facilities such as uh, delicious facilities, indoor fitness facilities, and nightlife venues are strongly recommended to suspend operation. Venues that remain in operation must strictly comply with the infection prevention guidelines. All these recommendation, recommendations are subject to administrative order now. Um, to conclude my uh, presentation, I will make a short comment. Uh, COVID-19 is a novel virus. We still need to learn more about this, uh, its characteristics. Here now, we have known that COVID-19 is highly infectious from its early Uh, as IT is required to enhance our traditional control measures and response measures, as well as to develop innovative measures as well. Currently, the world is experiencing the pandemic that we have not ever experienced in recent years. We really need to share information and work together to resolve all the challenges and overcome this crisis. Uh, I really hope our experience can help other countries to take effective measures against COVID-19 and uh, some much more uh, detail, uh, detail, detailed information in technology will be maybe provided by Dr. Zhang uh, in the next presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lee your presentation. So we go to a uh, question and answer uh, session. Then we have uh, the talk by Professor Zhang, which will also be followed by a Q&A session. And perhaps you may still be around uh, for that talk as well, Dr. Lee. So we got a lot of questions. And actually, just before I go uh, into the uh, Q&A session, uh, I just got the uh, the news that Boris Johnson, the UK Prime Minister, has uh, tested positive for COVID-19. Okay, Dr. Lee, you 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 showed one uh, at the beginning. You showed a graph where you explained uh, or where you showed data how many of the women and how many of the men got infected. And it looked like it's not just the uh, age distribution between 20 and 29, where there are more female infections than male infections. It looks like uh, it's, I don't have the data right in front of me, but it's, it's, the average seems to be more female than male. I mean, usually what I have in, what I've read is uh, more male and female. So can you comment on that? Um. Sorry, maybe I will just um, uh, uh, correctly say that because uh, 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 
uh, we have a very a large group of uh, the uh, uh, confirmed cases in the age group of 20 to 29, and also because uh, 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 all these targeted people. Because uh, for the the reason for that, we just uh, gave the reason uh, for the this uh, uh, religious groups target or uh, their strategy. Um, but uh, uh, we saw a lot of uh, number of the these uh, the female members, but uh, they come from the cases uh, as you mentioned, it's a little bit similar, but more, a, little, a bit higher than males. Actually, uh, compared to other uh, uh, countries' data, uh, most of the, the countries have uh, the uh, actually the very um, uh, the similar uh, percentage uh, between male and female, but uh, in Korea we have uh, uh, some more uh, cases in female. That's a uh, kind of a uh, uh, but uh, uh, unique from other countries, I think. Okay. Did you test patients without clear COVID symptoms? Uh, no. Uh, could you repeat again? Did you test patients without clear COVID-19 symptoms? Um, yes, actually, uh, at the beginning of our uh, uh, the, uh, the response, um, because we had very little information about this COVID-19. And then we only had uh, uh, limited information. And also uh, at the beginning, uh, the Chinese report, uh, the Chinese report is that there was uh, not certain evidence uh, uh, for uh, this uh, human, uh, human transmission. So at the time, our uh, the, the uh, case definition was very strict. And then we were more focused on the these uh, symptoms, pneumonia and uh, also respiratory uh, symptoms and things like that. But later we found out uh, the, we cannot depend on only these symptoms. So we uh, we also uh, found out uh, some the some the these uh, the travel. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the epidemiolog epidemiological link or history is also important. And also, if there are some uh, possibility of contacts, we had to have uh, this testing. So, uh, for example, uh, we had this huge Shincheonji cluster, and this cluster uh, actually had a very large um, uh, risk group, uh, which are the mainly uh, Shincheonji uh, religious group members uh, in Daegu, and uh, largely uh, all the nationwide. Actually, we've done all the uh, testings for the uh, this Daegu uh, area, uh, 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 Daegu, uh, uh, the, the Shincheonji members in Daegu, uh, and then we've screened all the members in the nationwide the Shincheonji groups. So uh, the, we've done this kind of uh, uh, the uh, this risk group uh, the testing at the time. And at the beginning, we also had uh, had uh, uh, this number was about like 9,300 uh, 9, uh, uh, the people uh, uh, we, we tested. And also, um, and also at the beginning, uh, we had some uh, large risk, uh, risk groups uh, uh, who had the travel history, uh, history to Wuhan uh, in China. Uh, and then we also tested all, uh, we also screened all these people. Uh, and then if necessary, we also had the testing uh, some uh, symptomatic people in priority, and then later uh, we also the asymptomatic uh, uh, the, the people as well. So uh, this is the, uh, uh, we don't uh, currently, uh, we don't do only the, these, uh, the, these uh, symptomatic people, but also we uh, do the testing for the asymptomatic people for screening. Uh, recently, uh, at the at the airport, uh, airport screening, uh, we've uh, I think one or two days we've uh, just tested all the inbound travelers uh, uh, for testing because we had a, uh, we thought we had a very high risk from the um, I mean all the inbound travelers from Europe because uh, we thought that this is a very high risk group. Uh, currently, we are now doing uh, just only the, uh, the the inbound travelers uh, has symptoms uh, at the airport, and then we are uh, for the uh, the. Uh, 
uh, people with no symptoms, we just go for the uh, monitoring screening, uh, monitoring under the, on the uh, monitoring. So uh, we now doing that, we are now doing that, but uh, before when we had this, uh, uh, the high, uh, this uh, uh, high risk group of uh, uh, the people from Europe, we did uh, also the testing for the old numbers. So it's depending on uh, our risk assessment for the people, then we uh, decided to go for the testing uh, the people for the people with the, our symptoms as well. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lee. A big problem in all the countries is there are not enough testing kits available. So the health authorities, the governments, they don't really know how widespread uh, COVID-19 is in their country. Couldn't the following be done? The same that you do for an election poll when you try to find out which party is going to win. Couldn't you take a representative sample of the population? Yeah, I don't know how that big would be for in the case of Korea, maybe say a thousand people. So you take a representative sample of the population whether they have symptoms or not, yeah, just a representative sample. And then you do testing. And then you should have a pretty good idea how widespread COVID-19 is. Isn't that a strategy that could be or should be followed? Um, it can be considered, but uh, from our perspective, um, actually, uh, this testing should be kind of uh, prioritized uh, based on the uh, risk assessment, as I mentioned. Uh, if uh, I'm in that position, uh, I will go for the risk groups, uh, high risk groups. Maybe for some people at the long-term health, uh, the health uh, facilities, because these high risk groups are the elderly and also uh, with the uh, underlying diseases. And the, and the, and the settings are those the, uh, people who are uh, sharing the homes and then they are uh, just uh, crowded areas and things like that. So um, not general population, but if I'm uh, in the, uh, the position, I think I will just go for the uh, screening for the high risk groups uh, rather than going for the general population. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Do you have statistics available on the severe and very severe cases uh, according to age. So is it mostly the older people who have severe and very severe cases or do you see this also in the younger population? Actually, we are, have the same tre trend. Uh, we have uh, much more severe cases in the uh, elderly and elderly with underlying diseases. Uh, I don't have the exact statistics right now, but uh, actually uh, next week, we, uh, our the, uh, article on the analysis of the severity and some, uh, some in-depth analysis uh, research will be, uh, 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 will be published, I think, uh, in our uh, KCDC, uh, the journal, uh, which is called the Osong Journal. Uh, so um, so uh, I think uh, it will be published and it will be also posted in, the, in our webpage as well. So you will have more uh, in-depth and in detailed uh, information about our epidemiological information analysis. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You had a slide where you showed the smart quarantine information system during the Mar uh, MERS uh, outbreak. Is that same diagram also applicable to COVID-19? Uh, yes, it is. Um, actually, uh, we actively use this information system. Uh, and then this is very important for us because uh, 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 as I mentioned, uh, all the our uh, the, um, case finding and contact tracing is very, very active because we don't want to uh, uh, lose anyone or anyone uh, of the suspect because uh, this one can be a huge or large big cluster. So uh, that's our uh, actually uh, the uh, strategy and uh, measure uh, for that. Uh, for, the, for doing that, it is really, really necessary for, for having all these kinds of information. And then we actually use this information for also uh, for, um, for uh, 
uh, expand uh, on the 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 context because you know some people uh, the world context they are ordered for the uh, self quarantine so they uh, don't uh, we don't want them to go out of our country to have some more risk in other countries. So uh, we also use this kind of uh, uh, the system, not only for our quarantine purpose, but we it's connected with the, the Ministry of Justice. So we also uh, uh, can use this information system to, the, to, the, 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 to uh, inform the Ministry of Justice as well. So uh, this is very important uh, system that we really use actually yeah, during this outbreak as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. How do you get all the uh, the GPS data and the data from the uh, telco providers? Uh, you, uh, you have a, I think you have a special law in Korea that allows you to access uh, the data. So you get pretty much all the data from the telco providers. Um, actually, we don't... Uh, uh, we don't ask all the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, this uh, 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 data for all cases. If uh, if necessary, we ask the uh, this kind of information. So uh, this um, quite quite dif uh, different. Because as I mentioned in our uh, case, uh, 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 I mean contact tracing strategy, there is a, a kind of risk uh, evaluation. So we go for the disc, uh, risk evaluation and then case evaluation, then uh, if we think uh, this, uh, this case's memory and then all these uh, date, uh, the information that we got from the, this, uh, this case's uh, uh, interview, then we don't go for the uh, further uh, information uh, 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 inquiry. But uh, if uh, he has a uh, bad memory and he is not sure about uh, about the locations maybe uh, in some certain cases that uh, the maybe the onset uh, of uh, the date of onset is far from now then the people has a, 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 a little memory about the, their what they did and the, what they what, where they were and on, for only those cases we ask for the edit, uh, for uh, the information uh, for additional use uh, to make uh, this information uh, accurate. Okay, thanks very much. I think we go into the uh, privacy topic also in the in the next talk uh, a, bit, a bit deeper. Mm. I mean, ideally, you would like to have a test that could be done by every citizen, like a self test, a self test for COVID nineteen. So I take uh, a swab. I do a self swab. I put it in my nose, and then I take it out and I put it in a test kit and then within a couple of minutes I know whether I'm pregnant or whether whether I have a COVID-19 or not. So uh, when, what are you, your projections? When would we have that? Mm, actually, it's depending on the accuracy of the testing method and actually swapping is very difficult to do by um, uh, uh, by yourself, I think. Uh, it's really kind of hard work for uh, our EIS officers also do this one, but it's uh, sometimes very hard. And then when we do this, you have a lot of coughs and then all these kind. Uh, we, it's also, uh, you are exposed to the, the, the risk, high risk of uh, transmission to others. If uh, if there are somebody uh, beside you and so on, so um, from the current uh, the, the the procedure, uh, we are not sure about uh, whether uh, it can be uh, possible. But uh, uh, if it's possible for better uh, testing, uh, not using this, uh, uh, the, this uh, current uh, swapping method and all those sample collection methods, it will be okay. But uh, we believe that currently the, the most accurate method is uh, the, the RT-PCR. Uh, and then uh, the technology issue, uh, we, uh, we also uh, encourage the, 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 the manufacturers or these um, R&D people to develop a more rapid and the more easy uh, test kits, but uh, we need to see uh, its accuracy. Uh, that's the most important factor. 
Okay, let me ask you the last question and then we go to the uh, to the next speaker. What, what are your predictions? Uh, what will the situation look like in say the fall of this year or towards the end of this year? Suppose Korea has been able to manage the uh, outbreak that it has been done so far successfully. Other countries will not have been able probably by that time. Other you know, in some countries may, may, may follow you perhaps, hopefully. So what uh, will life look like at the end of the year or in 2021? A lot of the people are not immune against it. We still have to wait quite a bit if, uh, and, uh, if there is a vaccine. So what's, what's your outlook? Mm. Okay, this might be my personal opinion, I guess. Um, uh, actually, we've seen other coronavirus like Ebola and Osmoris, but uh, we could see this coronavirus doesn't disappear, uh, disappear. Actually, it will occur, uh, reoccur, I think, or it will just continue uh, uh, just uh, with a sm uh, some sporadic uh, cases and uh, for year long. Uh, we uh, do not, uh, actually, the Korean government uh, actually has always, always set the worst scenario uh, to do to uh, uh, respond to uh, to this kind of outbreak, we will continue to see uh, to uh, to consider the worst scenario from now on as well. And uh, considering the worst scenario is for the preparation, uh, we have to be really prepared uh, for the reoccurrence of this virus and things like that. And then actually um, the, uh, uh, the, this, uh, uh, about the MERS outbreak, because uh, after the MERS outbreak in 2015, we are always prepared. And then actually last year, we had uh, like more than 400 subjects, uh, suspected cases in Korea. Actually, we had no confirmed case. So uh, we can see the, uh, all these uh, kinds of, uh, we have to be really um, uh, alert on the outbreak, another outbreak of uh, uh, this coronavirus. So um, we will be, uh, we will go back to our, uh, maybe uh, we hope to go back to our normal life, but uh, uh, our government think that the people's lifestyle should be changed because uh, Korean uh, people's lifestyle has some uh, some uh, uh, the vulnerable part, uh, vulnerable parts, uh, and uh, to the to the Corona uh, virus uh, because because uh, we really like gatherings and then uh, we like uh, you know having the, uh, the the meals together and they share the meals together and all these kinds of our everyday life. Uh, uh, the uh, styles. Uh, I think we needed to be adjusted to the uh, the, the infectious disease control uh, style. So uh, we just prefer to have uh, uh, this uh, normal life back, but uh, uh, with uh, some lifestyle changes. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, and a big <clears throat> big thank you again. You work seven days and nights uh, throughout the week, and uh, it's very late at night. Perhaps you're still available to listen to the other presentation and maybe for this Q&A period, we have uh, over 70 questions and all the questions are super interesting and we just don't have time to do that now. We'll have to figure out how we uh, could uh, maybe get answers to all those questions. Let's think about it. Okay, so let's move to our second uh, speaker. So, uh, Dr. Zhang. Hello. Let us switch the uh, presentation. So you will be sharing from your screen. Excellent, great, and the floor is yours. Uh, please go oh, ahead, that's, Dr. Zhang. That's not my screen, then I'm going to share my screen. Okay. All right. Good. If you go to presentation mode. Yeah. Great, thank you. Thank, thank you very much uh, for inviting me to this uh, very important talk. Uh, webinar. Then um, I'm Tai Chong. I'm work, working as a professor teaching computer science at Songyung Gwan University. Then I'm going to introduce some case that how we 
flatten the curve using ICT technologies in Korea. Then uh, I ask your understanding that uh, nobody knows that what's going to be happening tomorrow. So I'm going to talk about the things and efforts that we did so far. Then um, let's briefly talk about the damage we got by the COVID-19 in Korea. Then so far it's a little less than 10,000 patients we've got and 10 fatalities by the outbreak of COVID-19 in Korea. It's a huge number. Then we are suffering from the panic and fear from many people's death, about 100, um, then without being cared due to lack of medical services and facilities. But actually, let me say that this is not true. So, for, so far we can manage it with many volunteers, medical volunteers, medical doctors and nurses and volunteers now. But, uh, but honestly that we don't know about tomorrow so uh, and also the volunteers are kind of tired for a long month of um, long work, long time work. And also we experience economic crisis because of the separation of uh, people, companies, and even nations. Consequently, uh, many factories, restaurants, stores, they all have shut down and our uh, economy is falling down into the endless pit. This is quite, uh, big problem at this point. But uh, we try to overcome this kind of situation by applying the, uh, the uh, ICT technologies. Actually, we, uh, as you heard from Dr. Lee, we're doing a lot of different efforts, but I'm going to focus on the ICT services today. And also we have many different services and the solutions, but I'm going to introduce a few of them. And actually, and we are starting to realize that the value of ICT services, how it's important to overcome this kind of disaster. Then also we realize that the on of collaborative services is very important. So let me uh, talk about a few aspects of the, of the different uh, services and efforts. And first of all, uh, we like to maintain this society with a minimal uh, damage by applying the uh, social distance campaign. And so we are, uh, well, our schools are supposed to open uh, the semester at the beginning of March, but we couldn't open it. But uh, since we don't know how long this kind, this disaster goes, goes on, so we opened the schools, particularly universities with a remote education. Uh, for example, my university has 4,300 different classes open uh, for semesters. Then um, we uh, have the uh, remote lectures, online lectures in different style, like uh, giving the, um, the recorded lecture or uh, giving the real time uh, online lecture and sometimes they give the homework online and have some kind of projects done. But actually the problem is that we didn't have enough infrastructure. So we, we uh, install, we uh, construct the uh, additional, uh, we need to add on the, uh, the communication infrastructure and also we didn't, many people didn't have experience teaching online. So we kind of educating those people too. But month, we have been doing this for month, then it's kind of okay. We are found, find us few problems here and there, but uh, we can manage. But still our high schools and junior high and primary schools are not opening yet. So the government is kind of uh, wondering how we can do. Uh, this school business. And also uh, we are uh, applying the remote medical care uh, because the uh, hospital beca became one of the dangerous place. So we allow the uh, uh, chronic disease patients don't go to the uh, hospitals, just uh, get the uh, prescription by phone. And also remote work many companies and organizations participate in the remote work. Uh, 
but this is kind of innovative and new things. So we need to have, we need to make this remote work effective uh, and efficient. But still, uh, many companies don't know how to do the how to manage and uh, do this remote work. So this kind of, kind of homework. Uh, and Korean government financially supports the, the deployment of solutions and the R&D product for remote services using virtual reality, augmented virtual reality, hologram, AI, big data, and any other IC technologies based on the 5G and IoT environment. Fortunately, we um, started to use, deploy the 5G last week, uh, last year, and we have uh, a good infrastructure of IoT. But still, in order to uh, use this for many people or all the people, we still have a lack of the uh, infrastructure. Then we like to uh, maintain the society with a minimal damage. Though in the beginning of uh, coronavirus in the last month, then few of the a couple of the high school students developed the to show the routes of a patient. That was kind of amazing. That's right after the coronavirus exposed to the people, then they developed it and opened to the public. Uh, while we are using this kind of application, we realize that then the individual's private information, the privacy could be exposed to the people. People can guess who he is. So uh, we thought about the privacy issues. Even though we are facing the emergencies, we still need to keep the privacy information so that they don't suffer afterward. So we change it to show the various places instead of showing the route of the individuals to protect patient privacy. In fact, Korea is one of the countries uh, follow the strict uh, privacy policies Maybe it's as strong as the GDPR, but uh, because of this kind of emergency situation, we could lose those kind of uh, privacy information protection. So we are very cautious about it. And also the government developed the self-diagnosis application. Self-monitoring doesn't mean that it's monitoring the body or health. It's just a, the individual check his condition or her condition and type in the data. Uh, uh, particularly the traveling people going, coming into the Korea are supposed to uh, use the self-diagnosis uh, app. And also uh, in Korea, we uh, produce about 10 million masks a day, but the population is 50 million. So it's lack of masks. So we uh, have some kind of rule that the uh, people can only buy two masks a week. But we could see a long lines in the, at the store to buy your masks because they don't know where to go. Uh, after a after, uh, long time on the line, they found that there is no mask. It's kind of panic. So we've, we developed the government and private sector together developed uh, some kind of uh, the app or application uh, to find out where to go to buy your masks. Then let me, uh, this is quite important for us because we try to open the public data to the people, but it's quite slow. But this event, we found the solution to do that. This is showing that how we uh, develop this mask app services. Then, Mask sales and inventory data at the store are collected in a higher, higher is health insurance uh, rec uh, review and assessment services. So this government subsidiary. So after they collect this data, that NIA, this National Information and Society Agency, they modify the data to make it complete, like putting the store name, address, amount in stock then date, then uh, make the uh, data com uh, uh, complete for the services. 
and ask Naval Kakao Kedea, the, the private portal companies, ask them to make API for developer to access the data. So actually the data for privacy is in the uh, government sector, but the, uh, the, the portals can make API to access the data. Then they uh, provide this API and also they provide the cloud for development and operations because the developers need a huge resources. So in that case, in that the, uh, many developers developed mask app services and publish it to the public. So amazingly, more than 30 apps were published, released within two weeks. So this is kind of strategy to open the public data to, uh, we found that this kind of strategy to uh, open the public data to the private sector and use it. And also we have some ICT solutions to provide the information of current status and uh, ask people how to respond on it. Then uh, Korea Spatial uh, Information and Community, this company uh, developed a map service for uh, to show the current situation, route of patients, and place for diagnosis, and place for tension uh, based on GIS data. So um, this information is widely uh, provides lots of information to the people. Then another company, WiseNut, uh, developed a public chatting robot using AI techniques, the natural language processing technique to inform the way of preventing and correctly responding coronaviruses. So it's open to the public. Also, one of the portal companies in neighbor, uh, uh, portal companies neighbor uh, developed the AI based voice robot. That robot, AI robot, automatically calls the people who need the suspicious people and ask body health condition, then informs the public health center. As I said, the volunteers are limited. So if we ask volunteers to call every people in such time, then we could not manage it. But since they developed this kind of robot uh, based on AI, they uh, automatically cause a certain time and collects the information and uh, put in the database for the uh, public health center. And also the, the, the table, that's the company that crawls the data uh, from the uh, articles of 1800 media companies and analyze you using AI, then uh, provide the, the trend, corona trend to the uh, public. So this is how we provide the information of current status and how to respond to this situation. And also we have some, IC, we are having some ICT technologies used to speed up the kit development and examination processes. CGEN is one of the companies who developed the diagnosis kits. They using AI techniques, then it only took two weeks to, to uh, develop the diagnosis kits. Uh, even though we prepare to develop some kind of kit uh, for this kind of disease, then uh, from December, and without this AI, AI technology, so we couldn't uh, develop the diagnosis kit in such a short time. That uh, so the kit is certified by Korea and Europe in February. And Buno is the AI-based um, uh, the, the digital therapeutics company. They classify intensive patients by examining X-ray image of lung uh, within three seconds with AI techniques. They use the uh, vision uh, technology, then uh, that's used in public health centers already. And JLK inspection, they examine the lung disease within seconds using AI techniques also. They, uh, I'm not sure the details, but they probably looking at the uh, image and find out the, the the pneumonia or those kind of uh, symptoms from the lung. Then this is another thing very uh, interesting. Daegu City was building the smart city. Then smart city has data hub. 
then uh, we need to trace the, uh, the patient's uh, route, then epidemiological investigation was needed. Then we use this data hub to find out the, the routes. Then uh, since we were developing the smart city for a long time, we could utilize the power of the solutions on it. Then this is quite critical to develop the uh, new medicine uh, quickly, as quickly as possible. Uh, because we don't know, we, since we don't see the coronavirus, then we don't know where it is and we don't know when it's ended. So we are anxiously waiting for the medicine and vaccines. Then Diergen, they use the AI deep learning algorithms to predict interaction of drug and protein. And they propose the candidate machine such as medicine for HIV and coronaviruses. Then Arontio is another company, it's a platform development con uh, company. They developed a platform to find out candidate substances to treat coronavirus more efficiently. So uh, one company is the, the, the developing uh, the finding out the uh, medicine using the AI deep learning uh, techniques. Another one is develop the platform to accommodate those solutions and find out the substances. Uh, so those kind of efforts are collectively uh, working to uh, fight against the coronaviruses and settle down the uh, COVID-19. I believe that uh, this is the part of the effort we are giving and this contributions from, from the ISD solutions is great so far we found out. Then this is my conclusion. I think we are paying a lot of tuition to learn from COVID-19, but we should together make a best effort to turn the crisis into opportunity. In Korea, the people say this is crisis. If we overcome this crisis, we have lots of opportunity to be grown. So, I, and also we believe that this strategy will be ended sooner or later, hopefully soon. And to rising up from the bottom, I propose to uh, build a new society using the cutting at the ICT technologies. We experience that the ICT technologies can contribute in many ways to the society. We thought that it is true, but we didn't know. But we are finding out ICT technologies, particularly AI techniques, are helping to uh, develop the solutions and helping to, uh, the, for the people to communicate. So, and also we need to alleviate the relationship among people and society and nations. Uh, before we having this social distance campaign, we didn't know that uh, my neighbor and my friends are really important by finding out the, uh, the importance of the uh, people. So uh, from the lesson, I think we need to elevate our relationship much better, particularly between the nations. Then uh, this is my word, last word. We cannot escape from the past. We already experienced, but can build the future by well ma managing the present. Actually in Korea, uh, this is a small country, but we actually together to uh, cope with this disaster. Thank you much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Zhang. That was uh, excellent. Thank you. Thank you for that. We still have Dr. Lee also on the line. So, Dr. Zhang, the most often question asked, everyone wants to have these applications. Are they available as open source? Some are available on open source, some are not. Uh, but um, I believe uh, Actually, we encourage people to open their sources to the public using the, um, uh, any kind of, uh, in any kind of environment. So I have to check, but I think some, many of them are in open source community. 
Okay, so if people wanted to get to, the, to find out, they could get in contact with uh, maybe these companies and see whether that would be available? Uh, let me say this, this uh, the Corona web and those kind of things must, might be in the uh, open source, but I don't know about the mm -hmm. company's applications. Okay, okay. With respect to uh, privacy, let's uh, dig a little bit deeper into the uh, you know, topic of privacy. That's one of the uh, big question uh, in today's society. In order to make a better prediction, you know, AI needs uh, good data, needs a lot of data. So data would have to come from, uh, from the users. So there is this difficult you know, trade-off, uh, how much do you share uh, the data? So can you give a bit uh, a few details? So from what I know in Korea, a lot of information, private information has been made available not the name of the person, but I think quite often uh, you could figure out who the person was, if the person was infected. Uh, and then there is also discussion within Korea that maybe you have been releasing a bit too much information. Can we, can we go a little bit into detail on how these discussions are going in Korea? Okay. I have been at the uh, Bureau member of OECD, the, uh, the uh, security and privacy, part of uh, privacy and security. But I think that's, that's not a, the, the correct understanding because we have applied very strong regulations and policies on privacy. So, but uh, we had a lot of hacking instances. They exposed some data, but we're not opening the personal data to everywhere. We have a very strict uh, regulation and privacy regulations. So uh, it might be, as I said, more uh, stronger than the uh, GDPR. Uh, we apply this uh, privacy rule and regulation since 2002. And, and people complain that then uh, they cannot run the business because of the regulation. So we try to find out the balance between the use of data and keeping the personal information. So we uh, just passed the, uh, the, the privacy law last year. So we try to classify the, uh, the personal data and uh, hidden data and not personal data. So we try to use the data, but it's not true that we just release any data to uh, to, uh, to the public. Okay. Dr. Lee, you already talked about it a bit earlier. Is something you would like to add on this topic or have we covered that sufficiently? Uh, yes, I agree with the, the Professor Zhang. Uh, we have a very um, strong uh, privacy policy in Korea. Actually, we use this personal information only purpose for the uh, for the protecting the the, the, the public. Uh, it's only for the uh, purpose of uh, investigate in, uh, sorry epidemiological investigation. That's the the, the main uh, the principle. And uh, we uh, also uh, are having the also protection measures as well for the these kinds of all these uh, information. And about these uh, this risk communication. Uh, uh, we actually open the uh, the locations that these uh, confirmed cases uh, visited, but the, the 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 previously actually the local health, uh, local governments uh, had uh, much more information to uh, disclose, but uh, we've uh, set some guideline uh, uh, to uh, follow the, all the other local governments uh, as well as the, the, the KCDC. Uh, we uh, only uh, give some information of uh, these, uh, the locations that the uh, confirmed cases visited, uh, uh, which might uh, be uh, 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 help, helpful to others to prevent uh, these um, uh, uh, the the uh, their uh, the exposure to the to the uh, to the uh, this uh, uh, possibility of uh, infection. So um, we have a certain rules and also protect protection measures for the privacy. Um, that's uh, yeah uh, uh, the main principle of our measures. Thank you. 
Okay. Thank you. And also, let me say the uh, the civil uh, civilians. We are monitoring the government activities and government rules so that they don't make a mistake to expose the personal data to the public uh, by mistake. So uh, we actually worried too uh, because government may ignorant to, or not to make much pay attention to the uh, privacy data because it is emergency. But even mm -hmm. though we have emergency, the society is going on. So we should keep the minimum rule that the okay. civilians are also monitoring that too. Okay, good. Both sides are monitoring each other. Next question. Are you using AI technologies to predict the evolution of COVID-19? And are you then, based on these models, are you then making uh, decisions on whether to increase testing, decrease testing, test other parts, uh, or change your policies. So you're trying to predict, or how are you trying to predict the evolution of uh, COVID-19? That's to the Dr. Lee, right? The question is. Whoever can say something to that. Um, actually, my uh, division uh, is uh, uh, also uh, in charge of uh, uh, this uh, uh, the, uh, disease surveillance internationally. Uh, we uh, no in the uh, before even the COVID nineteen outbreak, we've always uh, surveil uh, did the surveillance on mostly about Ebola and uh, MERS and, and all uh, these kinds of. Uh, the very uh, uh, the important diseases uh, or some of the diseases that might be imported to Korea, which we choose to make some kind of risks to the our population. That was uh, uh, the our uh, the activities. Actually, we now are having the R and D projects in using this AI techn technology uh, by machine learning uh, for better uh, event-based surveillance. Um, we are currently doing that, but. Uh, to do this and for the prediction, actually, the AI should learn more about the, uh, the, the, the about the, the diseases and then uh, about the characteristics of diseases and then uh, and then the, it needs a, um, a lot of information. But this COVID nineteen, I think we are currently learning about its characteristics. So I think. Um, uh, for using this AI, I think we need to gather more information to make uh, AI to learn about this disease as well. So we are, I think, in the middle of a process to to uh, yeah to um, see how we can use AI uh, uh, for uh, in the response of the to the uh, COVID nineteen. Actually, the, uh, not only Korea, but why, worldwide, the people are predicting so many things using AI, like uh, when is it going to be ended, what kind of virus is going to be occurring, and those kind of things. The thing is that people don't trust 100% on the predictions. they only looking at the facts. So even though the people make uh, some predictions from the previous event and their characteristics, still, then we are not following the predictions yet. Then maybe afterward we were saying, that, oh, AI is good at this point. But still, this academia, we are trying to figure out what's going to be happening, what to be prepared to using this AI predictions. And also you said that the, uh, we could uh, uh, test the normal people to see if they are infected by the coronaviruses, but you should understand that we don't have room to do that, room to uh, satisfy the curiosity yet. We are all 100% focused on uh, saving the people and the, the get rid of these coronaviruses. Then later on, probably afterward, we could review all the predictions by AI and see how AI was uh, good. One question is, how long did it take to uh, put this ICT strategy into place? Uh, I think that has been a long ongoing process and Korea is uh, like one of the top nations with respect to information and communication technologies. That's not something that you learn overnight or within a few months. I think that takes a long time. Could you comment on that? What advice could you give to countries? 
it depends. There are lots of different uh, level of ICT technologies. Unfortunately, uh, since 1998, we try to build the uh, high speed networks. Then also we try to uh, uh, to educate the people to be a good software engineers. That at these days, if we say that we develop some kind of apps, it probably take a couple of days, like uh, the, uh, the, the mask apps and Corona map apps. That's quite simple. But uh, for those solutions for examining the lung cancer and things, uh, we still working on like two years and didn't find a good solution yet. And also we need to resolve, so resolve the regulation problems. We are not allowing the remote uh, the, uh, medication and remote uh, medical services yet. So two things, one is technology. I think we are up to developing the, any kind of things in, in a short, such a short time for trivial ones. Uh, but uh, we need to resolve the uh, 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 we need to uh, the change the regulations and legislations at this point. So if you say that how long it takes, it depends. But, but the complicated ones takes years. Mm -hmm. But most the simple applications we could develop in a week. Okay. When you said last year, uh, Korea started uh, 5G. I mean, different people have different uh, opinions what 5G means. But uh, aside from that, what you call 5G and what you launched last year, was that helpful in fighting COVID-19 in Korea? I believe so. Because um, since we don't have uh, uh, many applications on 5G, but at least we deployed 5G and uh, established 5G and deployed the smartphone, a lot of smartphones. As you know, 5G is uh, like 20 times faster than LTE if we use uh, 28 uh, K, uh, gigahertz. But actually in Korea, we are using 3.5 gigahertz now. It's not that fast, but you could, uh, for example, let me say this. If we don't have uh, fast networks, we cannot uh, have the remote uh, education at all, online education at all. But since we, in my school, we deployed 5G and uh, use the solutions. So without big problem, we can uh, have 20,000 people, more than 20,000 people um, take, take uh, the online class at the same time. So there are lots of applications we are developing, but so far uh, we found a few applications which was only working on 5G. Okay. Thanks a lot. Last, uh, maybe last question because it's 10.30 in, uh, in Korea, 10.30 at night. What advice would you give to other countries? What would be your top, your top advice, your number one advice to other countries? Learn from the experience. Then the Korea, the good thing in Korea is that we had uh, the uh, confirmed cases earlier than other, other people, other than the Chinese. So we should uh, develop a lot of things. We have developed a lot of ICT solutions. So I hope that the other countries who, like America and other countries who we are now following us uh, better to learn from us. And uh, I think the, my government and we are, are willing to teach those kind of experiences and share the know-hows. And also, I think we need uh, like collaborative work the na or be among the nations because we are traveling. So it's one of the ideas is that the uh, issue, the certificate, of vaccinated people who are issued to guarantee the health, then uh, no matter what kind of uh, uh, the method we take, we should cooperate and we should communicate other day, other, otherwise the economy will be falling down so quickly. Mm -hmm. Dr. Lee, your closing words, what's your top advice to other countries? Um, Actually, as Dr. Zhang mentioned, I really agree with about the preparedness. Um, actually, in the public health field, we always uh, emphasized on the um, public health emergency preparedness and response. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, when you 
or in the middle of uh, this kind of uh, outbreak, you should think of or uh, consider all kinds of uh, uh, the scenarios. And then you have to actually have some plans uh, for those scenarios uh, to be prepared. Uh, our government has uh, actually followed those steps. And then uh, I'm sure that other countries are not that late uh, to uh, follow uh, these kinds of steps as well. We always assess the risks, uh, current risks, and then we actually consider how we can do in the limited resources and, in, uh, and, and also limited uh, um, capacity. So, uh, and then also we uh, had a, a very active information sharing with other countries. Um, we will do that. We will continue to do that with other countries and then uh, I hope we can uh, all together uh, can uh, uh, just uh, overcome uh, all these risks uh, in the future. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot both of you. <clears throat> that was great, very much appreciated. Uh, and uh, I guess your advice is um, countries somehow have to try to survive the current COVID-19 crisis and then get ready to battle the COVID-20 crisis. We'll be better prepared for that one. Okay, so thanks a lot. You're working seven days a week and the seven days doesn't mean just days, it also means uh, nights. So a huge thank you to both of you for having made yourself uh, available. We will make the presentations available, the PowerPoint presentations, when we also present, we'll make the, uh, the video available so people can, uh, can listen to that. And uh, just for the uh, colleagues still online, we do a just a poll now to see whether you liked it or whether you uh, didn't like it. I'm not sure whether we have that ready. Uh, if you if we could launch the uh, poll to see whether you were happy with the uh, webinar or not, then. Uh, let me uh, also mention two items that might be of interest to you. One is we have a uh, technical working group uh, that's done in collaboration with ITU and the World Health Organization, WHO. It's called AI for Health. And the idea is to come up with a benchmarking framework to check the quality of AI models. The group is open to anyone. So you're happy to uh, participate if you're interested. And then we would also like to point out our AI for Good Global Summit, which will take place 21 to 25 September. If COVID-19 allows, it will be physically in Geneva. If not, it will be an online event. So uh, thanks a lot again for our speakers in Korea and also for you to have uh, participated to the attendees of uh, uh, this webinar. Thank you very much, and we're going okay. to end the uh, meeting. Thank you.